SpaceX has been making a lot of noise lately as their Starlink project is about to open up a public beta. With pre-orders open for the USA, Canada, and the UK, it's worth taking a quick look at the various satellite offerings, see what they have to offer, and how they might compare. It's time for a satellite showdown. Now, before we jump in, I'm going to need you to do that thing where you hit those like and subscribe buttons uh, under this video. Make sure you stay up to date on all the coverage we're producing here for Reviews.org. All right, SpaceX is getting a lot of attention at the moment, but there are two other competing companies for satellite internet access. The other players in this space are HughesNet and Viasat, different strategies for connecting folks to the web. HughesNet and Viasat use larger satellites in geosynchronous orbit. While starting Link is using a more complex web of satellites in low Earth orbit. HughesNet and Viasat operate with only a couple of satellites for each service, while Starlink currently has hundreds. The expected grid for Starlink at full rollout is going to be around 12,000 individual units in orbit, which might present some issues for astronomers. Right now, Starlink has launched about a tenth of its expected satellite count. But the tighter grid of satellites at a lower orbit should mean an easier connection during installation and lower latency while browsing the web. The current satellite players maintain about a half second delay, which can get longer in poor weather. Starlink is aiming for a sub 50 millisecond latency when the service is out of beta. It's a little difficult to compare speeds against service and price when Starlink is in beta. SpaceX is claiming gigabit downloads eventually, but reports from beta testers, uh, they're putting the service nearer cable internet speed, somewhere around 200 meg downloads and 20 to 40 megabit uploads. HughesNet's offerings do qualify as broadband under the current FCC definition with up to 25 meg downloads and around four megabit uploads. But we are seeing political pressure to raise that definition to 100 megabit connections. Viasat's top speed gets us closer with a maximum download of 100 meg. Though this is what's kind of tricky to compare. HughesNet and Viasat operate these speeds on plans with pretty strict data caps. The top option for data and speed at Viasat can cost $150 a month. Month. And while it's called unlimited, after 150 gigabytes of data used in a month, your connection is throttled to a 3 meg connection. We don't know what the data caps will look like on Starlink as the formal public pricing has yet to be revealed. We just know that it will cost $99 a month, and we don't know if there will be different tiers for different speeds or different quantities of data used in a month. HughesNet and Viasat require professional installation to communicate with their satellites. Plans come with 24-month contracts and equipment is leased to the end user. Starlink satellite grid approach should make it easier for an individual to install the hardware and find a signal themselves, but the satellite kit needs to be purchased up front at a cost of $4.99. You just won't be under any contract to cancel service. And that was a bit of talking to get through the general breakdown. The critical component here, we're about to see the effect of a new player in the satellite space, and fresh competition has a way of shaking up products and services. We're going to need every tool in our toolkit to help close the digital divide for those consumers underserved for internet access. Fiber, cable, LTE and 5G, and of course, satellite. I'm sure some of the folks watching these videos likely have family or friends in rural areas that struggle to keep up with modern tech. Have any of your family tried a satellite provider? Drop us some comments down below. For Reviews.org, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. Thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel, and I'll catch you all on the next video.